friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. This is part two of my Gemini chatbot tutorial. And in the first part, I had shown you how to make a basic chatbot. And in this final part, I will show you how to give it a more professional look by using dynamic labels that can be scrolled and have that look of WhatsApp or Messenger, okay? And the reason I split the video into two parts was that if someone is interested in just learning how to use the dynamic components extension in MIT App Inventor, then they can just view this part, okay? So let me just go over what is needed in the user interface for the dynamic components extension to work is a vertical scroll arrangement. Okay, so I have a vertical scroll arrangement and the height is 75% and the width is fill parent. And I am going to remove this label. This is a temporary label that was needed to show you the working of the basic chatbot. So I'm just going to delete it. Okay, and then I am going to get an extension from this place. I will give this link in the video description. This is the dynamic components extension. So download this AIX file. Okay, so then go to MIT App Inventor, click on extension, click on import extension, choose the file that you just downloaded, wherever it is, so, and then click on import. And once it has been imported, just drag it onto the viewer, okay? Now, go to the block section and we need a few global variables. So one is the message counter. So MSG counter, and we are going to initialize it to zero. Let me make it a bit bigger. Right click, duplicate. Now this is the color because remember that our message bubbles are color differently depending upon whether it's a user or the Gemini servers. So I'm just going to, you know, give it a color orange. And then I'm going to make a procedure. The first one, add message bubble. It takes in two inputs, so click on the cogwheel and drag two inputs to it. The first is a true false value for whether the message bubble is for the user or for the Gemini servers. And this is the actual message. Okay. Now I am going to make a few local variables. So be careful. This is the ID. Okay. So Every dynamic component that is created using our dynamic components extension need to have an ID so that we can access it later for changing its properties, okay? So this is basically a join from text logs of two things. First one is a text block that says MSG and the second is the message counter. So hover over it to get the get block for it. Okay. We need another local variable. So this is now the label ID. So the first one is for a horizontal arrangement in which we are going to put in a label, a dynamic label. And this is also a join of two things. The first one is the ID. And the second one is a text block that says LBL label for short and then we are going to first of all increment the message counter so incrementing means adding a one to it so from variables get the set block message counter from math get the plus block and variables get block message counter math zero block and this is now one. Okay. Now we are going to create a dynamic component, a horizontal arrangement. 
So click on dynamic components and call its procedure for creating in what? So we need to provide an arrangement here. So this is important. And what is our arrangement? It is our vertical scroll arrangement. So click on it, go down until you get the actual component. And now the component name. So this is also very important that you get the spellings right. So this is horizontal arrangement. Okay. Horizontal arrangement and the ID is, remember we created an ID. So this is the ID. Okay. Now we want to give this horizontal arrangement the property of full parent width. So how can we do that? Again, click on dynamic components and go down and we have this set property block. So get that and here now we have to provide it the created component. So how can we get that? That was the use of our ID. So if I click on dynamic components, I have this get component block if I provided the ID. So I can get the ID duplicate it from here. So this will give me the horizontal arrangement. I have to tell the property that has to be changed and that is width. Again, spellings are important. Width and the value to make it fill parent is minus two. So this will make it a fill parent width horizontal arrangement, okay? Now we are gonna check if user is true. So from control, get the if then else block because remember we have to color code our messages. So from variables, get the get block and check if is user. We are going to first of all set our global color. So I am going to actually use a light gray color for the user. And I'm also going to align the messages for the user on the right to add a bit more distinction, just like in WhatsApp or Messenger, okay? So how can we do that? I can right click, duplicate, bring it down, and here the component is the same, horizontal arrangement, but the property is different. It is align horizontal. Again, spellings are very important. So align horizontal and here the value is two to make it right, okay? And else means that it is not the user, that means it is for the Gemini servers. So right click, duplicate, and I'm gonna change the color to light blue. And right click, duplicate, and here, I'm going to align it left. So for that, the value should be one, okay? Now we are going to actually add a label inside this horizontal arrangement. So, again, from dynamic components, get the create block and make sure that it's after the else but within these two orange blocks. So here, now we have to create it within the horizontal arrangement. So we can right click, duplicate to get the horizontal arrangement. And the component name is, you know, label. So L capital A B E L. And the ID is, remember we created the label ID too, so I can duplicate it from here but make sure that you change it to now label ID, okay? And then I am going to set its property just like I was doing it for the horizontal arrangement. So I can right click and duplicate this one, but I'm going to change the ID to now the label ID because I want to now change the property, set the property of the label. And which property I am going to set its text property 
so again t capital t and this is now the actual message so i have to set its text property to whatever the message has been sent to this procedure so get block and this is now message okay now i am going to also change the background color of this label so right click duplicate change this property name to background and c o l o r color and here i am going to change it to the color and we have updated the color depending upon whether it's user or the gemini servers again right click duplicate and i'm going to now update the text color property and this i'm just going to make it black so from colors get the black one okay and last but not the least i would like to change the font size to so font size and this is a number and i'm going to give it a value of 18 so you can make it a bit bigger too okay so make sure that you get the spellings right because otherwise this will not work so this is the way of adding the dynamic components now you have created your procedure now you can call it from a chatting app and not just a chat bot so just call this procedure and it will work for you okay and from where am i going to call it in my chat bot app when i click the submit button and call the gemini servers i need to show my question so here so I, i'm going to do it in the very beginning because we are emptying it later so we have to do it in the very beginning so i'm going to call the procedure and here let me make it a bit bigger so here the user is true and the message is whatever is inside the question text so get, go to question and get it okay and the other place we are going to call so i can right click duplicate bring it here and we are going to do it at the end of this reply text remember where we were doing the temporary label we are going to replace it because we got rid of it so we are going to put in its place the call to our message bubble but here it is false and this is not question text it is your reply text so go to variables get the reply text and this is done i hope you found this video useful and educational and you now know how to use gemini ai in your apps you also know how to use dynamic components in your app don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and family and please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the great projects that i've planned for you thank you for watching have a good day and goodbye